This is 1E, where you are asked to create a report that will list churches where payment for a booking has not been made within three weeks, and that means that the payment is overdue. And you're then given a list of requirements, including that if a phone call reminder has already been made, then the church shouldn't be included on this report, because this report is for the phone call reminders. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a query first of all that lists the, the um, bookings that we actually need. It's not the churches that we're listing, because it's, although we'll be getting data for the church, it's the bookings that will be overdue. So we're going to create a query in design view for the booking. Now we can choose which fields we want later on when we create reports. So the easiest thing to do is just add all of these fields on for now and we'll sort out it later. Now it says if a phone call reminder has already been made, the church should not be included on the report. Okay, so this must be false. We don't want that to be ticked. Similarly, if they've paid, then their payment has been made, so they don't need to be included on the report. So we'll put that as false. What we'll do is we'll have a look at what we've got so far. We've now got a list of churches where the phone call reminder hasn't been made and they haven't paid. But we need to see those that are overdue by more than three weeks. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at those and we're going to compare them with today's date. So we're going to have a look at the payment due date and we're going to compare that payment due date with today's date. Now, if you recall from the last task, we use a date add function to calculate the difference. And we want to look at three weeks ago and we want to see where any payments due are before three weeks ago. If they're exactly three weeks ago, they shouldn't be included because they're just about on time. It's if they've gone over that three weeks. So first of all, we're looking at before three weeks ago. We're going to use the date add function again and this time we're going to add weeks. Now we have two W's. I know last time it was four Y's. I don't know why it changes from two to four and for months it's one M. Uh, so it can be quite confusing. We just have to remember these things or you can look up the date add function uh, via a search engine. And we want to subtract three weeks and the date we're going to subtract it from is today's date. So this report will be valid for any time that we run it and it will show us any bookings where payment has not been made, a phone, record, a phone call reminder has not been made and the payment due is over three weeks ago. So that's what we're doing. We're taking today's date, we're subtracting three weeks from it and we're looking at those that are before. So let's have a look and see if this works. There we go. Okay, and we're now looking at anything that is more than three weeks ago. So I'm going to save that query. I'm going to call this query phone calls. As long as it's something sensible, it doesn't really matter what you call it. You just don't want to be calling query one, query two, etc. And I can close that query down and we can now create our report that is going to list the information that is asked for on here. So, if we have a look, it says it wants to include the name of the church, the lead contact name, contact mobile phone number for each church. We need to see the booking ID, date of booking and payment due date. And we need to see the pitch allocations for each overdue booking, showing the quantity, price, charge and description. And we're also going to be grouping it by church. So we'll work through these bit by bit as we create the reports. So we'll use a wizard. Here's our report wizard. And we'll start off by having a look at the church because it says that it is going to be grouped by church. Okay, so that's the first thing. So the name of the church, lead contact name and contact mobile phone number. So we'll go for the name of the church. Change our table to church first of all. The forename, surname and the contact mobile telephone number. Can see why that's necessary because of course they're going to have to phone the church. Then we want to list all the bookings for each church showing the booking ID, date of booking and payment due date. But we don't want the booking table. We want 
the bookings where we're going to be making the phone calls for. And it asks us to put on the booking ID, the date of the order or the booking date, and the date the payment is due. So I put those information on. We then asked for the pitch allocations for each overdue booking, and these should be displayed showing the quantity, the price charge, and the description of the pitch. So we'll go for pitch allocation, and we'll go for quantity, price charged, and the description will come from the pitch type table. So that's put all this information in. We click on next. It asks us now how do we want it grouped. Now we do want it done like this with church, then the booking, then the quantity. So it will list the church, then all the bookings, and then all the quantities and the uh, pitch allocations. We don't want any extra grouping adding. But we do want some summary options because it says the total amount that each church is overdue should be calculated and displayed and the overall total should also be displayed. So I'm going to click on summary options and I'm going to do a sum of the price charge. Now I know that won't give us the accurate data because it doesn't include multiplying it by the quantity but it will make it easier for us to edit it later. Next we're asked how we want it to look. Well, outline is always the best option to go for. It does adjust the data to be more attractive for us. And what title do we want? The question says, phone call reminders needed. So that is what we will call it. Phone call reminders needed. And what we're going to see is a very basic layout of what that form will, or what that report will look like. Now, this isn't in-house style yet. We need to sort out the house style. It hasn't got everything exactly how we want. We haven't got the totals right. We've got this extra information. So we're going to do a bit of tidying up. And we'll do that bit of tidying up in the next tutorial.